Over a year and a half ago, I created what I called Opposite Day Theory, and I made a video called Opposite Day as a Way of Life. Basically, no one watched that video, but I was super proud of it, and as time goes on, it continues to hold up. So this will be the updated version of that video. Here's the basic principle. At some point, maybe in the late 60s, we decided to invert cultural and moral norms and hold the opposite of those norms as the highest possible good. It's the process of looking at reality and then willfully choosing to do the opposite. As I described in the first video, it's almost like Orwell's concept of doublespeak. Your brain does have to know the correct view in order to hold the opposing one. Opposite day is like a drug for the left. They just can't stop doing it. Back in June and July, I was reading some articles by CNN that were puff pieces for Biden, and they were trying to address the issues of his failing approval numbers. They showed an administration that was scrambling to utilize Biden to his fullest potential. Senior aides blamed the newer ones, and the newer aides complained that they weren't being listened to at all. It was cast as this big mystery as to why Biden wasn't getting the traction he deserves. But if you follow Biden, which is to say you follow his PR team, then the CNN articles don't make sense. Because the Biden administration is living out opposite day as a way of life. And negative poll numbers are going to be the natural result of that. But they don't really care. You remember when this dude showed up to the White House and got horrible reception? If good PR was what you were really striving for, you would never do that kind of thing again. But they can't stop. Because on a regular day, you would pause and have a moment of self-reflection. And maybe hold a meeting and discuss if this is what the White House should be doing especially with the issues facing the nation. But it's opposite day, and so none of that happens. Instead, they just had Dylan Mulvaney to the White House to visit with Biden. Now, Dylan is the human embodiment of opposite day. We know he's not a woman, and he knows he's not a woman. And he knows that we know that he's not a woman. And we know that he knows that we know he's not a woman. And yet, he continues to be a woman. See, this is all doublespeak. He can't pretend to be this monstrosity without acknowledging the truth first and then willfully rejecting it and doing the opposite. Here's how they frame that first visit by Cooper. Conservatives are big mad about Jen Psaki starring in a gay comedian's new video. A video featuring White House Press Secretary Jen Psaki's intern, Cooper, the alter ego, of queer sketch comedian Benito Skinner has conservatives clutching their pearls on social media because not only is the video part of the White House's campaign to, quote, get shots in the arms of every single American, but Cooper is flamboyantly gay. Cooper, the incompetent Gen Z intern, is just one of the characters that Skinner's become known for on social media, but he was the perfect fit for the White House's campaign to encourage young people to get vaccinated against the virus. In the video, Cooper brings his particular brand of chaos to Saki's office, popping in to say hi to POTUS, making unrequested nail appointments in the name of initiative, and of course, doing his part to get shots in the arms of every single American before heading out for a haircut. This video is funny and winning, and so of course, conservative commentators led by Donald Trump Jr., because of course, are getting up in arms about it on social media. The outrage has left others wondering if the right wing understood that the video was a joke or understood its purpose. See, it's just a joke, guys. Lighten up. Can't you take a joke? I mean, he's not really flamboyantly gay. Well, I mean, I guess that's not true. But still, guys, come on. The only reason you're not laughing is because you lost the election. It's called satire, people. Get into it. But Dylan Mulvaney is not satire. He is the real deal of fakery. He didn't cop out and hide behind the veil of comedy. Dylan is for real. 226 days ago, he decided to be a woman, and so he just became one. And he's been documenting his journey of womanhood, taking us along for the ride one day at a time. Take day 66, for example. He went into nature to breathe the fresh air, to see the views, and to desecrate everything it represents. 
He even brought along his hiking heels. <laughs> what a quirky, silly gal he is. You see, on opposite day, there can be no satire because satire has become reality. On opposite day, satire would be if this guy cut his hair, lost the fake voice, dressed in a three-piece suit, and went to the White House to ask Biden real questions that he wrote himself. That would be satire in this new reality. But instead, he's deadly serious because he's fully living under the opposite day paradigm. And why stop? He's rewarded for it, clearly. The opposite day theory applies to everything. On a regular day, the media would just report in a nonpartisan way the events that happened on that particular day. But it's opposite day, so they lie and twist and manipulate every story. On a regular day, the government has to stick to a budget. It has to follow economic principles and laws, which are as inflexible as the principles and laws we see in the physical world. But it's opposite day, and so there is no budget. They don't follow the rules. Of course, the Inflation Reduction Act will increase inflation. On a regular day, they would do things we know would help inflation, but it's opposite day, and so they're obligated to make it worse. That's the point. On a regular day, the president wouldn't just be able to forgive half a trillion dollars of student debt, but it's opposite day. On a regular day, we punish criminals and reward law-abiding citizens, but it's opposite day. On a regular day, the U.S. and Ukraine would be scrambling to come up with a peace deal as fast as humanly possible to save the most amount of innocent lives they could, but it's opposite day, so they're going to keep this money laundering operation going for as long as they can. On a regular day, Lizzo wouldn't be able to get within a thousand yards of James Madison's crystal flute, but on opposite day, you hand it right over. The fact that it's degrading, the fact that she twerks with it, the fact that she's an embarrassment to the country becomes the point of why they do it in the first place. On a regular day, you wouldn't want kids to come to your drag show. But on opposite day, nothing turns you on more like the thought of showing your genitals to little kids. On a regular day, you wouldn't even think of taking your kids to a drag show. But on opposite day, nothing makes you more excited than to see your kid be exposed to smut and degeneracy because you yourself are a degenerate. And rather than feel shame and disgust, like you would on a regular day, you lean into the rot inside yourself. That's the point of Opposite Day in the end. It's anti-culture. It's anti-human achievement. It's anti-human flourishing. It's anti-science. It's anti-life. It's anti-religion. And it's anti-reality. They know it sucks. They know it goes against the grain of reality. That's the point. The humiliation is the point. This is our punishment for being white, for being great, for achieving while they sat at the bottom and couldn't even manage to invent the wheel. It's payback. It's been the perfect medium for the left to build momentum with. It perfectly harnesses the resentment people feel. On a regular day, these people are undesirable. They're unqualified. They're too reckless. They make stupid decisions because they can't help it. But they make for damn good soldiers and useful idiots of the regime on opposite day. Will it last forever? I doubt it. You can only do the opposite for so long until you're unable to feed yourself or heat your homes. Reality has to snap back at some point. The DTrans subreddit is a great example of this. They lived out the most extreme case that opposite day has to offer. That a man can be a woman or that a woman can be a man. And nothing shows more fealty to the regime than the ability to do that to yourself. And we know the outcomes. Fighting reality at that level leads to nothing but negative results. And negative results will continue until you realize that what you're doing is wrong and change your behavior. See, that's what repentance is. Not only do you acknowledge that what you did is fundamentally wrong, but you must turn away from it and never do it again. That's the only way for things to get better. Unfortunately, I don't see repentance from these people in our future. I see gulags and work camps and re-education centers. And maybe they'll find repentance there, but not right now. Anyways, if you like this video and type of content I'm making, consider giving this video a like or maybe subscribing. I will see you all in the next video. Peace.